and welcome so today's video we are doing the cam belt or time belt on our Jetta 1.6 turbo diesel pretty compact under engine bay but we'll get on to what we need to look at so the cover's got to come off so let's get that pulled off three metal clips 10 mil bolt and the top ends off now while the top ends off we need belt 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 and the bottom cover need to come off so i've already cracked these nut these bolts off these four allen keys they can be tight best place is sort of do these with a wheel on the floor maybe or someone sat there with the brakes on just to make it easy to get them undone now that needs to come off so we need the bounce off now i'm going to cut these off because they're knackered anyway as you'll soon see they're cracked but also when i pull the bounce off you can see there's been sat for that long they've sort of held their own position instead of remaining floppy so you see just do a Reverse bend on it, you can see that's split. That's well past it. And that's the good one. This is the bad one. The state of that. Yeah, bin that. One thing to do before you get these bolts off is tighten up, undo the uh, water pump bolts. So we just give it a wiggle. Shouldn't take too much force. And then the bottom pulley should be off. Boop, like that. And that gives us access to the bottom timing cover. So there's three bolts on there. One, two, and there's one above the pulley. Now, like I said, this pulley here, undo these bolts before you take the bolts off. Otherwise, you'll have to end up getting a massive pair of pipe wrenches on the pulley to hold it tight. So once they're all out of the way, there is a washer, which sits in between the front pulley and the back pulley. Now, make sure it goes back in there, otherwise you're going to have issues with things locking up. Because this water pump pulley is a, a slipping pulley. So there we go, that's off, and now we can get the bottom timing cover off and see what we need to. So we can see the timing belt. What we want to do now is, before we take anything off, get a ratchet and a 19mm uh, socket. We want to turn the engine over and see if everything lines up. Now, we've got a timing mark on the fuel pump pulley and the on the casing, so we can line that up. But the engine... We need to look at the cam because on the diesels these don't have a mark i mean someone's put markers there but i wouldn't rely on those in the slightest so we need to take the cam cover off So that's off and out of the way. Now we can see what we need to look at. Now there's a line cut out at the end of the camshaft. Now this needs to line up with the head. See it's close now, slightly off. So what we want to do is get our number one special tool or an engineer's file, because it fits perfectly in there and lines up with the head and keeps it at TDC, so top dead center, which is where we want it. Simple as that. I mean, you can get special tools, but if you're doing this job, you're gonna have one of these in your toolbox. Now we need to look at the flywheel. Just to double check, the flywheel marker lines up with the pointer on the gearbox and we know the engine, top and bottom, is at TDC. So now at this point we've confirmed the bottom end and the top end are both at TDC and the fuel pump is where it should be, which was running anyway, so we're not too worried about that at the moment. Again, so they're lined up, we are now in a position we can pull the belt off. So the fuel pump wheel will come on to later where you have a bit more time to do on that. So 15mm spanner, this is a special one. Simple of undo the tensioner. And remove that. As like I say, if you're doing a cam belt, you want to do the tension because ninety percent of the cam belt failures you're going to have. It's not the belt; it's something that's caused the belt to snap. Nine times out of ten, it's the tensioner that has um, failed and locked up. A good telltale sign the cam belt is due is those lines that you see on the sort of outer face. Now, tension is a good one. It is an INA tension, so that's the one you want, really. Others will do, but if you're going to do stuff like this, it's important. Make sure you get good quality parts. So we've got a new belt and our new tensioner. Now, tensioner needs to go on a certain way. Those two little holes are for a locking tool, so they need to sit away from the engine. If you bolt it on the other way with that at the front, you lock up the tensioner, it won't work. Now, fuel pump needs to line up with that mark there. 
so you'll see a little cut out in the pulley you can move it quite easily and line it up now you can lock these but to be honest when it sits like that it's easy enough personally just to move it itself sit it on there now ideally you get these slightly off and then when you do the tensioner it will line up perfectly So that's it, our timing belt is on. All lined up with the teeth on there. Now we are, what we wanted is slightly off on the fuel pump, which we'll address later on, because it'll all line up nicely when we talk things up. So slide it on, you want to sit the timing belt in the middle of the pulleys roughly. It will straight self-align itself. Now you can see they're about a two, three quarters of a tooth off on the belt. Now we have got this top part of timing belt is a bit slack. Now here we have special tool number two, circlip pies for your tensioner now as you get tension there it will twist that a touch and bring the marker bang on line now we don't too much force on this just the point you've got a bit of tension on it again you don't want to go too tight because then you end up having problems with the auxiliary shaft wearing out its shells so there we go not too tight just right so that's all on now what we're going to do is we take the engine. So take number one special tool out, otherwise you're going to snap stuff. And then just get a ratchet, 90mm socket, and give the engine a good two full rotations and line it back up with TDC markers to make sure nothing locks up, no horrible noises, and it's nice and smooth. So once we're at there, as you can see, our timing mark on the fuel pump is now bang on line with the metal casing, which is what we want, because we'll come on to finer detail in the pump in a minute obviously put special tool number one back in there make sure that lines up happy days so now we're all good to go and move on to the next stage of fuel pump timing so now we're stepping up a bit we have got our dial gauge out now there's a 12 mil bolt in the back of the fuel pump undo that make sure it's all clean around there we've got a dial gauge sitting in the back now we want to make sure the engine is at tdc so that mark is lined up and the cam is horizontal with the head and the dial gauge is bolted on nice and tight now what we want to do is rotate the engine backwards about an eighth of an engine rotation or until the pointer on the flywheel is going to about half ten ish and then we want to zero our dial gauge now make sure these are bolted tight because they can give skewed reason, re, uh, readings and you'll end up chasing your tail I have already adjusted this one to where I want it. Factory is about 0.037th of an inch. I've set this to 40. What that does is, I'll explain a bit later, why these need to be so precise or spot on anyway. Makes sense in a bit. So we're just rotating the engine forward again, and here we go, the movement's coming up. So we're lining back on the TDC. Sitting, bang on, 40 thou. So the time mark's lined up. That is horizontal with a head, as we want. And then we've got a reading of 40 thou on our fuel pump timing, which is what we want. Now to adjust this, there's a bolt there, a bolt there, and a bolt there. You undo those, and then you can rot rotate the pump. Why are we doing fuel pump timing, you ask? I tell you. Petrol engine. Piston goes down the cylinder, draws in air, mixes with fuel, piston comes back up and compresses that mixture. And then at the right point, the spark ignites that mixture. Boom, that's our explosion. Throws that piston down the block, turns the crankshaft. Now, getting that explosion as big as it can be is getting our spark to ignite at the right point. So it's told to ignite, and by the time it actually ignites, the piston has just gone past TDC. The best you're going to get. Now, diesels, what's so much different with diesels? Not a lot, really. Piston comes down the cylinder comes up and compresses just air though. Now diesel isn't flammable till it's heated above 50 degrees. I think it's 52 degrees. So as that air is compressed, the air heats up. So when it's right at its pinnacle point, the air is compressed and the piston is just about to go past TDC, the fuel injection pump, like the spark plug, 
throws that fuel straight into the cylinder via the diesel injector. Now that introduction of fuel makes the compressed air explode. Boom, piston back down the cylinder, turns the crankshaft. So getting the fuel injection pump to inject that fuel right at the perfect point is the same as getting your spark to ignite the fuel mixture at the right point. So that's why we want to make sure our fuel pump is absolutely bob on. So now we are all done. So all we need to do is button things up. So get your dial gauge out, put the 12 mil bolt back in there with a new copper washer and nip it up just enough to obviously crush the copper washer. Don't over tighten it because you'll ruin it. Tighten these fuel pump bolts up. They are torqued to 22 pounds foot and then tighten this puppy up. And that is 30 pounds foot and a quarter of a turn. Don't over tighten it because it's a steel stud and aluminium head and you'll rip the threads out. I like to mark things up so they're all good. All you've got to do is do everything in the reverse, put it all back together, obviously new bouts, new rock cover gasket and get it all buttoned up and ready to fire up and all the pipes back on etc. So as you can see that's the timing pump done, all we need to do is button up all the bits, covers back on, new bouts, new rock cover. Again I won't show you to do that because it's the reverse of coming off, pretty simple. If you've taken it off you know how to put it back on. So points to note really is just take your time, cam bout is simple, Getting the engine tied up is your flywheel, pretty simple. The cam is your indent in the cam, very simple. Before you rotate the engine, make sure you take any locking tools out. You can get special tools, but they cost money, and if you've got a toolbox to do tools, you're going to have what you need in there. Once they're out, the engine rotates. If you haven't got a dial gauge on the pump, just put it to its exact line, and you're going to be somewhere close. But if you want to make it perfect, dial gauges aren't expensive. Um, you can buy them from your, your normal sort of motor store or online, Amazon, eBay, that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, just follow it and do it properly. So it looks right, it feels right, and it goes right. Um, one thing I do, I do tend to mark things when I tighten the back up. You can see the torque settings, um, do those as normal. The one on the head, like I said, don't do that too tight, because if it pulls a thread out of the head, you're gonna be in a bit of an annoyance, but it's all fixable. Anyway, thanks for watching, if you can, Click subscribe, like the video and look forward to the next one. So once that's running all back together, we will be doing the boost enrichment or fuel enrichment. So when the turbo gets boost, it adds more fuel. How do we get more fuel? I'll show you in the next video. Cheers for watching. Bye.